If you do not go after what you want, you will never have it. If you do not ask, the answer will always be no. If you do not step forward, you will always be in the same place. With these words, welcome you all to ABS Creations by your educationalist Chandra Kala. A rule is not a rule, but it is a frame of discipline. By walking within, you will reach position from where you will. In this session, we will deal with the second concept of federalism. How is federalism practiced? I hope so. You have understood the concept and the meaning of federalism and the features of federalism in the previous session. What is federalism? Federalism is a system of government in which the power is divided between a central authority and various constituent units of the country. Now we'll move deep into how federalism is practiced in India. So for the success of federalism, what is required? For the success of federalism, what is required? So it is said that constitutional provisions are necessary for the success of federalism, but these are not sufficient. Before we enter into this concept, we should know what is the meaning of constitutional provision. It is a law that is written in the constitution itself and does not come from a rule or a statute. It establishes the basic rights, duties and structure of the polity. These provisions cannot be easily altered except by the way of amendment procedure given in the constitution itself. So constitutional provision is nothing but it is specifically a designated rule or a law within a nation or state's constitution. It cannot be changed or altered by a court of law unless the process outlined in the constitution. So even though the constitutional provisions are there, it is not sufficient. If the federal experiment has succeeded in India, it is not merely because of this constitutional provisions laid by Indian government. The real success of federalism in India can be attributed to the nature of democratic politics in our country. The real success of federalism in India can be attributed to the nature of democratic politics in our country. This ensured that the spirit of federalism, respect for diversity and desire for living together became shared ideals in our country. So the nature of democratic politics has ensured the spirit of federalism, respect for diversity and desire for living together. They became shared ideals in our country. Now we'll move on to the concept of how the federalism is practiced and what were the different tests conducted in India for democratic politics in our country. There were three major tests for democratic politics in a country. They were linguistic states, language policy and center state relations. What were the three major tests for democratic politics in our country? They are the creation of linguistic states, language policy and the center state relation. The first major test for democratic politics in our country was the creation of linguistic state. First of all, what do you mean by the word linguistic states? The creation of states on the basis of languages is known as the linguistic states. The creation of states on the basis of languages is known as the linguistic states. Linguistic states recognize differences based on culture, ethnicity or geography. Now you can look at the political map of India. You can observe all these four maps here. It is not the same structure. 
so many old states have been vanished many new states have been created their areas boundaries and the names of the states have been changed so you can observe the map from 1947 1947 2013 it goes on and the present state so in this particular picture of various maps of various years it is clearly understood that many old states have vanished and many new states have been created areas boundaries and names of the states have been changed so in the year 1947 you can observe in this map itself the boundaries of several old states of india they have been changed in order to create a new states now imagine the present map of india you can see lot of changes in the present day map so the old states several old states of india they have been changed in order to create a new state so this was done why this was done this was done particularly to ensure that people who spoke the same language to ensure that people who spoke the same language lived in the same state so some states were created on the basis of language some states were created on the basis of language but there are some states which are not created on the basis of language but to recognize differences based on culture ethnicity and geography so these states like nagaland uttarakhand and jharkhand come under the category of the states which in which they wanted to recognize differences based on culture ethnicity and geography so when there was a demand for the formation of states on the basis of languages when the demand for the formation of states on the basis of language was raised some national leaders they feared that it would lead to the disintegration of the country some leaders they feared that it would lead to the disintegration of the country the central government resisted linguistic states for some time but the experience has shown that the formation of linguistic states the experience has shown that the formation of linguistic states has actually made the country more united and made administration easier so formation of linguistic state actually made the country united and also made administration easier so the linguistic state is a major test first and the most important test for democratic politics in our country the second test for indian federation a second test for indian federation is the language policy so what is language policy language policy is a safeguard to the languages language policy is a safeguard to the languages it is one of the important aspects of our constitution under this policy besides hindi 21 other languages are recognized as scheduled languages by the constitution so a second test for indian federation is what the language policy our constitution it did not give any status of national language to any one language but they identified hindi was identified as a official language but how many of them spoke spoke hindi and how for how many of them hindi was acting as a mother tongue it is just only 40% of the indians it is just only 40% of the indians therefore many safeguards there were many safeguards to protect other languages besides hindi there were there were 21 other languages which have been recognized as scheduled languages by the constitution how can we count these languages here how many languages do we have in india the answer depends on how it how it is taken into count 
so the count is carried with the help of the census department of india so for example the census which is a, which has been held it recorded more than 1500 distinct languages some languages were grouped under some major languages few languages have been grouped under some major languages for example languages like bhojpuri magadi bundelkhandi chatisgari rajasthani billi and many others were grouped together under the major language hindi you can see the orange color every most of the areas all these languages come under bundelkhand plateau region chatisgarh region rajasthan region you can see all the orange color entire orange color comes under hindi hindi spoken area so even after grouping the census found that 114 major languages are there of these 22 languages are now included in the 8th schedule of the indian constitution 22 languages have been included in the 8th schedule of the indian constitution so it is called by the name as what scheduled languages as it has been included in the 8th schedule of the indian constitution so in terms of languages in terms of languages india is perhaps the most diverse country in the world in terms of languages india is perhaps the most diverse country in the world as we have recognized 22 languages 22 scheduled languages include hindi for example a candidate who appears in the examination conducted for the central government position may opt to take the examination in any of these languages states too have their own official languages so for example tamil nadu what is the official language of tamil nadu it is tamil so likewise states too have their own official languages much of the government work takes place in the official language of the concerned state but when hindi was considered as an official language unlike sri lanka the leaders of our country adopted a various cause, cautious attitude in spreading the use of hindi when hindi was considered as an official language many of the people started protesting against against hindi to be considered as a official language so according to the constitution the use of english the use of english for official purposes was to be stopped in 1965 so in 1965 english which was used as an official language it has been stopped but many non hindi speaking states many non hindi speaking states they demanded the use of english the use of english to continue in tamil nadu this movement took a violent form the central government responded by agreeing to continue the use of english along with hindi for official purposes so the central government as the movement took a violent form in tamil nadu the central government responded by agreeing to continue the use of english along with hindi for official purposes many critics think that this solution favored the english speaking elite many critics think that the solution favored the english speaking elite so promotion of hindi continues to be the official policy of the government of india so promotion doesn't mean that the central government can impose hindi on states where people speak different language the flexibility shown by the indian political leaders helped our country avoid the kind of situation that the sri lanka finds itself in so this is what we used to say it as the language policy the third test the third test for the democratic setup for the indian federation is the center state relations is the center state relation restructuring the center state relation is one more way in which federalism 
has been strengthened in practice so according to the constitutional arrangement according to the constitutional arrangement for sharing power in reality it depends to a large extent on how the ruling parties and the leaders follow these arrangements so in india for a longer period of time the same party ruled same party ruled both at the center and in most of the states it is observed that for a long time in india the same party ruled both at the center and in most of the states this meant that the state governments did not exercise their rights this meant that state government did not exercise their rights as autonomous federal units so in such cases the central government they showed their power they often misuse the constitution to dismiss the state government that were controlled by the rival parties so this has undermined the spirit of federalism when the state government did not exercise their right as autonomous federal unit the central government they try to undermine the power of the states undermine the power of the state and also to dismiss the state government that were controlled by rival parties so this has undermined the spirit of federalism but after 1990 but after 1990 all this aspect of domination of one party over the other that is central party over the state party has been changed after 1990 there arose a rise of regional parties regional political parties in many states of the country so 1990 is the period of the beginning of the era of coalition government coalition government at the center first of all what do you mean by the word coalition government so it is a government formed by coming together a government formed by the coming together of at least two political parties usually partners in a coalition form a political alliance and adopt a common program so after 1990 so the entire domination of the central government over the state government has been vanished as they saw the rise of regional political parties in many states of the country So this period came to be the beginning of the era of coalition government at the center. So no single party, no single majority party at the center they cleared no single party they got a clear majority in the Lok Sabha. The major national parties at this particular point of time they had to enter into an alliance with many parties. including several regional parties to form a government and the center so as they did not get a majority number of seats in the lok sabha the major national parties and the at the center they started entering into an alliance with many parties including the regional parties to form the government at the center so this led to a new culture of power sharing this led to a new culture of power sharing and respect for the autonomy of state government which was not previous which was not given previously by the central powers so the new culture of power power sharing started and the respect for the autonomy of state government has been given to the state so this trend was supported by a major judgment of the supreme court that made it difficult for the central government to dismiss the state government in an arbitrary manner so previously before 1990 the state government was undermined by the central government so they dismissed the state government they majority party they misused the constitution and they dismissed the central government but after 1990 the respect for the autonomy of state government was given and this was supported by the judgment given by the supreme court so when the judgment governed by the supreme court 
it made it difficult for the central government to dismiss the state government in their manner so thus federal power sharing is more effective today than it was in the earlier years after the constitution came into force so the power sharing the federal power sharing is more effective today than it was in the earlier years after the constitution came into force so this come under the category of the third major test for the indian federation to follow the democratic politics so what is that restructuring the center state relation so the three major tests for indian federation is linguistic state language policy and the center state relations i think you understood this concept you can test yourself by reading this questions the creation of linguistic states was the first and the major test for democratic politics in our country justify the statement india is a country of diverse languages examine the statement under the linguistic diversity of india when was the beginning of coalition era and why examine the controversy over hindi and english as official language discuss the center state relations in indian federalism so in the next concept in the next session we will deal with the third type of government third tier of government that is the local government decentralization of power if you like this video you can comment it you can share it and you can subscribe it thank you